My name's Guy Kestivan. I've been a professional biking kit tester for nearly 25 years and today on Guy Test TV, uh, sponsored by Zero Cycling UK, I figured it was about time I did another project build because uh, they were really popular uh, last this, about this time last year, uh, built up the Cotic and the Pace. In the theme of doing something different, which I started with them, I've got something properly beautiful to start with here. Specialised chisel limited edition of frame uh, from the Earth, Air, Fire and Water series. This is actually the Earth colourway. Uh, Earth and Air came out in February and then Water and Fire are coming out in June. So, uh, very limited edition frame, uh, part of Specialised Artist series. Uh, they do these on select frames uh, throughout the years. Uh, and the the theme on these was kind of, kind of the contrast and juxtaposition between uh, our sort of digital obsessions and uh, digital addictions. So we've got a little bit of uh, sort of computery graphic panel there, but then these really, really subtle earthy tones and this speckling and this amazing, I don't know if I can make it glint properly, but hopefully you can see that amazing sort of gold logo down the down tube there. As that switches around. I mean, it really is a beautiful piece of paintwork. You've got some, you know, really nice little fine detailing on there. It's a proper custom paint job. You've got little gloss panels there. Like I say, you've got that cactus sort of printed decal on the back there. I mean, it is, it's just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. And what's interesting is this, although this is, you know, basically a full custom paint job and this frame retails for 10.99 which is only you know a few hundred quid less than the uh, bottom of the range chisel bikes uh it's still relatively affordable you know it's an alloy frame it's not mega mega expensive uh carbon frame because you know that was the whole kind of ethos behind the specialized uh disrupt and decay principle on this uh project on this one was to kind of put some really really special uh limited edition art in the hands of more people by putting on an affordable frame but that is not to say this frame is not a sensational ride. I um, mean, if you've read any of my reviews in the past on the chisel, this is just such a drop dead gorgeous bike. Uh, this is an extra large frame. You know, that's going to make the uh, project build up interesting in some ways. I'm still not sure which way I'm going to go with it. I know where I'm going to start, but I might be taking this in some really interesting directions, I think, as we progress my time on the frame. And what's special about this uh, Smartwell frame, I mean, it was actually the technology was introduced in about 2013 on specialised road bikes first, but it's a totally new, different way of engineering the tubes. Uh, specialised teamed up again, Chris Deluzio, he, he's got his name on the frame set, on the frame technology really, uh, but Chuck Texeria uh, had a massive influence on him as well. One of the most uh, experienced uh, alloy engineers in the business, started work on Eastern, did you know, who are real, real pioneers in terms of top end aluminium component and aluminium frames way back in sort of early 90s even. Uh, and the whole principle is, is rather than having open ended tubes, I mean, kind of an example, I mean, obviously this has to be open ended because it's a C tube, but rather than having an open ended tube, like as you conventionally get, what they do is they roll, essentially roll the end of the tubes round to kind of pinch them in. So the tube itself has a huge amount of strength in it because the ends are kind of rolled over. You know, it's that classic, you know, difference between a flat piece of paper and a slightly rolled piece of paper. Just, like I say, you know, having ridden these bikes, they just feel fabulous. They feel like, they feel like, you know, some of the best titanium frames out there, just a real spring and life, nothing like the kind of sort of caricature sort of dead, stiff, harsh aluminium feel. You know, these are beautifully organic feeling uh, tube set. And if you look inside the tube there, that's the, actually the that's the down tube. That's not the head tube. And you can see it's kind of curved around. It looks a bit like a loose seat here, which isn't the most uh, flattering analogy I could make. But because the tube actually curves around at the end, the tube itself has got a tremendous amount of strength built into it. And I don't know if you can see there's just a little lip there. I'm hoping this comes out on the GoPro properly, but you can see... There's a little lip there where the head tube and the tube butt against each other. And it just makes the tube itself much stronger uh, in terms of what load it can take. 
So you can make the rest of the tube, the walls and everything like that, so much thinner. And that's where you get such a light but strong tube set. And because you can make the walls thinner and you can make them slimmer, uh, you can really dial in the ride characteristics as well. So these bikes, you know, whether you're talking about the road bike and you're talking about this chiseled mountain bike frame, they are absolutely beautiful to ride. Yeah, that's a, that's a better look at it there. Uh, and you can see my nice compressor as well. But yeah, concentrate on the tubing, not the uh, compressor in the background. And you can really see the difference in there compared to a standard just sort of butt joint on the frame. And it also means that where the welds are, uh, there's a big channel. Uh, so the head tube comes in, but as the tubes curve away, you've got a really big weld filling area there. And as you can see, they can make the tubes incredibly thin, even though you know this is obviously a mountain bike frame. Uh, the weight's light, even for an, a relatively light for an alloy road frame. And you can see, you know, we've got beautiful sort of super slim stays down the back there. And another thing that's quite striking about this frame, uh, no bridges at all between the tubes. I mean, you often get a reinforcing bridge, certainly on uh, aluminium bikes uh, or steel bikes, just to give some extra support there. So no reinforcing bridge across there and none across these super wide space seat stays either. So there's not only tons of mudroom, but it means that the whole length of the stays either end are kind of free to move and articulate and really create that amazing sort of sprung compliance which you traditionally associate with like steel or titanium but from a an alloy frame so you're getting alloy affordability but with a titanium weight you know that's that's basically what you're getting with this uh, smart weld setup because you know you'd be hard pressed to find a tie bike a similar weight to this and uh, you certainly wouldn't find a steel frame uh, weighing a similar weight to this uh, without seriously compromising its strength and fatigue life. And as well as the actual tube set detailing, you've got you know some really nice practical detailing on the frame. It's a uh, threaded BB. Uh, the internal cable routing is really nice to get to. It's just internal down the uh, down tube, and then this little segment goes in here. And as you can see. It's all labelled for your brake, your post, your front derailleur, your rear derailleur. So, you know, it can work with the front derailleur on there if you want. I'm definitely going to be going one by on this. And that just little piece just sits in there, bolts in there, clamps it all in place. And then you've got a cable guide there for the front mech or for the dropper post in there. You've got, that's the uh, gear line on that side and the brake line on that side. You've got specialised kind of uh, trademark sort of serrated sawtooth uh, chain quietening, uh, chainstay protection there. You've got a neat post mount there. Just sat in on that drop. Oh, sorry, completely the wrong way around to show that. Uh, you've got the neat post mount brake there. It goes between the seat stay and the chain stay. Uh, obviously, boost rear axle. Neat little drop out on the back there. You know, it's a beautiful, beyond the frame set, it's a beautifully put together piece. Uh, very subtle, just uh, internal cable routing pieces there and a multi-position uh, bottle boss on the down tube as well there. But just every time you twist and turn this frame in the light, it just looks absolutely stunning. So, uh, how am I going to build it up? That's the question. And I don't know yet. I mean, one of the first experiments I want to do is just build it up as a relative conventional bike. Uh, quite old school, I think I'll go in some ways. Uh, might not even go with a dropper post at first, just see how light I can get it and just to see how it compares to a gravel bike really for the kind of, you know, the more extreme gravel I'm doing, which is still relatively mild cross country. And but I'm just interested, loads of people have been asking me, it's like, should I get a gravel bike or should I just get a cross country hardtail? And I've been saying, I've got a project coming up and which is exactly, you know, that's what I want to find out because it's certainly when we've done back to back testing before, we actually did. I actually did it for Cycling Plus magazine a couple of years ago with a chisel, a uh, fully built chisel. And I have to say, it was it was so close to the same speed on the road, but obviously a lot more capable off-road. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting project. Uh, so, relatively conventional build-up first. Uh, I mean, I've got some specialist kit coming in for it, you know, because obviously a bike like this deserves some really, really nice pieces on it to really bring it to life, to maximise that potential of this stunning frame. But also there'll be a bit of beggar and burrowing just because of the current situation with components and stuff like that. So uh, it's going to be a series build up and then some more features on how it rides, how I tweak it. You know, I've got some really uh, 
slightly perverted ideas what I could do with it because it's an extra large frame as well. And the reason I've got extra large, I probably normally go for a large, maybe even a medium. Uh, it's just simply because this was uh, this is what was spare from Specialized. I'm you know super grateful for them to sending me the, for sending me the frame for uh, build up anyway. So beggars cannot be choosers, and it might provoke some uh, interesting build decisions as well. So please stay watching for that. Uh, thanks very much to Specialized, as I say, for sending in the frame. Thank you very much to uh, Zero Cycling UK for sponsoring the channel at the moment. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers who pledge a small amount on a monthly basis uh, to help me film videos like this, to pay for my time on the channel. And, you know, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider joining them on Patreon. But whether you get into that or not, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, click for notifications so you know when the rest of this series will be coming out. Because uh, hopefully we'll be going through the process pretty quickly because I'm super, super keen to get this bike ridden. But for now, I'm Guy Kesteven on Guy Kes TV with the absolutely stunning Earth version of Specialized Disrupt and Decay Chisel Limited Edition Frame Set. Thank you very much.